Hi guys, and uh, welcome to Rossi Audio again. Uh, today's topic is going to be something that I just wanted to get off my chest. This, this, this video is very, very, very um, on the go. Um, audiophiles um, is a term that is being used a lot um, among people who collect audio equipment. Um, and some people use it the right way and some people are abusing it or misusing it um, so let's take a look at what audio files really is and audio files mean you can you can google audio file and you can get a dictionary description of it and um, I I want to say that that's a very very true description of what it really is but then you have people who put audio files and, and the meaning of it and what it takes to be one and, and put it into the wrong context okay um, a lot of people um, think that being an audiophile means that you have to have a certain brand or um, equipment that costs a certain amount of money um, that is totally BS and is wrong and uh, it couldn't be any further from the truth so by saying that you don't have the right brand so you are not an audiophile you your your equipment is not worth enough so you're not an audiophile or i even hear people say oh you're not listening to the real um the real audiophile music so you're not an audiophile so let's take those three um can call them categories or reasons to be an audiophile and let's start with the first one that is just so easy to debunk and so easy to call BS which is the music you're listening to the music you are listening to is not def define defining anyone if they are an audiophile or not just because someone is listening to jazz or classical doesn't make them more audiophiles than someone that listens to blues or rock or country or even pop uh, or even electronic music they the music you listen to does not define you or your equipment if it's audiophile or not so it, when someone tries to tell you that you are not an audiophile because the music you're listening to is not the right type of music basically just tell them to go and take a hike and stick their head somewhere that the sun never shine um because that's just bullshit and that's just i won't come into this later on this just ties into what i call audiophile snobs and it is a bunch of very ignorant narrow-minded people so the music type we know right off the bat it doesn't matter what you listen to you can still listen to Pink Floyd and be audiophile you can listen to Nirvana and be audiophile you can listen to Metallica or Iron Maiden and, and be audiophile uh, just as much as you listen, listen to Bach or Diana Krall or whatever so music choice and music type does not define you or your equipment as being an audiophile or not so that's out of the, out of the way let's look at the other aspect of it that some people choose to kind of like categorize other people they say well if you have a equipment a setup let's say you have the normal setup like a, a cd player or a, and a turntable a preamp and a power amp and maybe you have some eqs or something like that and, and a pair of speakers or two if and some of these people say that if your equipment costs less than five thousand dollars it is not audiophile grade again bullshit and total bs the price does not determine if you are an audiophile or not and uh, being an audiophile has nothing to do with price where they did where these people that i call audiophile snobs or audiophile wannabes and wannabe know-it-alls where they do get these things from uh, it's quite mind-boggling 
how they can say that price defines what is audio file or not. And let's, let's put it out there. Price does not define if you are an audio file or not. So it doesn't matter if you have a system that costs 2500 bucks or $3,000, which is fairly average price for a component set, a setup of different components. Um, I'm not talking about a rack and all that stuff and all in one boxes you can buy at Best Buy. That is audio equipment and, and, and stereo equipment for, for the masses. That's not, that's not the same thing here. You are to a certain degree stereophile or audiophile then too, but it falls under a different category. category. So if you are an audiophile, and you have components, like I said, you have a, a, a signal source. Um, most people have both CD and turntable. And some use cassette decks. Um, and you have a preamp and an amplifier and EQ and, and maybe one or two pairs of speakers. Um, if it costs 2500 bucks or $3,000, you are just as much audiophile as the guy who has a $10,000 system or a $20,000 system, or even a $50,000 system. So, and some people have $100,000 system. You are just as much audiophile as they are. So don't let the price determine or define you or your system as audiophile or not, because price doesn't do that. Then we come to the last category or the last aspect of it, and that's brands. And here's a lot of people talking like, you see it on Facebook groups, you see it on forums, you see it everywhere. And you even see it in real life when you go to hi-fi and audio shows all over the world. And I've been to uh, quite a few of those. Um, and they kind of like say, well, if you don't have these brands and they have like this favorite list that they have, and there's maybe like 10 or 15 or maybe 20 brands on there, or models of speakers and, and equipment or components. And they say that if you don't have any of that what's on that list, you're not an audiophile. Well, brands does not define if you're an audi audiophile or not. If you look up the, the description of audiophile, you see that brands, price, and music is not mentioned, is not even a part of it. So it doesn't matter if you have Morans, Denon, Yamaha, or whatever, Electro Company, uh, Krell, um, Mondial, Acurus, uh, and then the list goes on and on. Um, if you had those, which the ones I mentioned is kind of like more of the entry level area of audiophile and hi-fi up to the mid and upper area. I'm not talking about these extreme things that cost hundreds and thousands of dollars or maybe millions. I, I'm not even going to go there. So most people buy stuff in the range of, if you're serious into sound, you buy mostly stuff that is like $2,000 and up to maybe 25000 That's where most people are. And that's, that's where most people are having their equipment located. So in that range, everyone is just as audiophile as the other. So owning a brand, if you don't have a certain type of brand or certain type of model or something like that, that doesn't define you as an audiophile or not. Audiophile is someone, and this is my personal view of it, and no one can ever change my view on how I see an audiophile and what an audiophile is. An audiophile is someone who loves music and loves listening to music and enjoying it for what it's worth and then what it was intended. It is intended as an entertainment um type of activity it is intended to 
engage the listener, it's intended to captivate the listener, and it's also intended to make the listener feel good and happy. So if you are enjoying music and you like music and you're authentic about it, that's what creates the audiophile in you. And of course, you want to have equipment, I do and many other ones to, also wants to, to have equipment that can reproduce the music that you like, the way you want it to do, the, the way it makes you feel happy and satisfied. So, he, and a true audiophile uses his equipment or her equipment to listen to music and the way they like to listen to that music. The, uh, the people that I talked about that put people in categories in, and, and stuff like that, the, the audiophile snobs, those are the ones that tells you that you are not an audiophile unless you have a certain brand or price range or, or music that you listen to. <clears throat> Here's what they do. And they, these are the guys who, and girls who, or whatever, who calls themselves true audiophiles and who calls everyone else not an audiophile. Um, or audiophile quality of equipment. Uh, they use the music. And listen to this. They, they use the music to listen to the equipment. So they get more kick out of and more enjoyment, if you can call it that. And by using music as a tool to listen to their speakers and amplifiers and turntables and CD players and cables and whatever. That's not what the whole thing of audiophile was intended to be. And what is described to be. You use equipment to listen to you, the music that you like to create the, the, the result and the, the reproduction of the music that you like the way you want it to be. So <clears throat> someone who let's, let's say someone who likes hard rock or heavy metal, they are just as audiophiles as anyone who listens to Diana Krall trying to spew out a few words with a piano in the background. So there doesn't matter. You listen to jazz, you call yourself audiophile, fine. You listen to heavy metal, you call yourself audiophile, fine. Both are audiophiles. The question here is, what are you using it for? What are you using your equipment for? The guy who listened to hard rock and heavy metal, uh, and the, in, in that same boat, you can also put electronic people and listen to electronic music and pop. Some of these people really, really, really like to reproduce and, and play their music loud with force, like the same way if they went to a concert. That's, they, they want that from their music. And they buy equipment that can do it. And that's why not all equipment can handle all types of music. So for the people who love jazz, who thinks that is the real audiophile music, they buy speakers that can play jazz. And let me tell you, jazz is so simple and so straightforward. There's no complications to jazz. Um, any speaker can play jazz nicely. Um, not all speakers can play extreme hard heavy metal that is very complex, that has a lot of distortion built into it and a lot of, lot of signal compared to jazz. So the people who listen to that type of music, they, they choose speakers and equipment and amps and CD plays, whatever that can reproduce that in the same fashion as it was recorded or as if they went to a concert and was standing in front of the stage and were listening to it in the 110, 120 dB. So it's all about you enjoying your music the way it was intended and how it makes you feel good and, and how you want it to be. 
it has nothing to do with brands, has nothing to do with price, and it has nothing to do with the type of music. The people who say that, mean that, and think that's the reason why you're an audiophile, don't worry, they are audiophile snobs, they are audiophile wannabes, know it all, and really they don't know it all. They don't know anything. Because they, they are these are the people who believe that you can get a frozen cable that costs five thousand dollars a feet. That sounds better than a regular copper cable. So you really don't need to listen to these people because they really don't know what they're talking about. They they don't have the true um interest or the true reasons or the passion to be in it because all they do is listen to their equipment they don't listen to the music they listen to the equipment the equipment is more important than the music a true audiophile believes think and and sincerely mean that the music is the most important thing to be an audiophile and by using equipment to reproduce that music the best way possible, the way you like it, then you are a true audiophile. If you use music that is easy to play back or create on a sound system, like a female voice with a piano in the background, not that hard, um, and you use that um, as a tool to listen to what your system sounds like, then you're then you're way off. You're not even an audiophile. You have no real interest in it. It's all about bragging about having the most expensive, and really bragging about being the most dumbest idiot to buy all this bullshit snake oil stuff that is being sold to so-called audiophiles. So if you are a person that mocks everyone else, that has normal regular audiophile systems and normal regular audiophile beliefs uh, if you mock those people and you you tell them that they can't be it because they don't have the right brands or the right price or the right music then you are an audiophile snob and an audiophile wannabe and you really don't know much and god bless your heart because you have been fooled and you have spent some serious money on some stupid shit. Have a nice day.